Patrick, I guess. Good to go. Good to go. Okay. Welcome everybody tonight to our May uh, workshop meeting. So, oh, let me introduce who's here. That's that would be a good idea. I'm Stephen Bedetti, Councilman. Eve Lincoln, Councilwoman. Steve Moreau, Councilman. Sylvia Santiago. Should introduce you first, but he always wants to be first. That's okay. Kelly Allegro, Town Clerk, is here. Anthony Feo, our Highway Superintendent, is also with us. We also have our Town Attorney, Dave Zagon, with us tonight. And we also have our Chief of Police, Robert Doss. And manning the uh, computer is our IT specialist, Patrick Mangan, and I am George Myers. Okay, first item on the agenda is a couple of grants that we got, and I think I've kind of everybody's aware of them, but just to kind of go over it quick, we got that wastewater treatment grant. We bonded about 60 million for this wastewater. We got a $15 million grant from the state, so about 25% of the cost is will be taken off the local taxpayers. Um, Second grant is for the New Windsor Senior Center, Moresco Center. We there was a pile of money that we were told that we could apply for, and we did apply for it. And the bottom line is we're going to looks like about five hundred thousand dollars to bring up this Moresco Center. It hasn't been touched in years, so those are two major grants that will be hopefully coming our way very quickly. They've been approved already, and. Um, We'll get started on Moresco, I'm hoping, in the next couple of months. There's this is always some steps that we have to do to get there. And the only people who, who worked on these grants were in-house people. There. No one outside helped us get anything. Uh, the main player was McGoey Hauser Etzel, firm, uh, Mike Weeks and his crew. I think in particular, Quinn Malarkey did the yeoman's work on, on this treatment plant, and Mike Weeks uh, shepherded both of these grants, and I appreciate their help because that's quite a bit of money to take in, take off the uh, local taxpayers, 15 million, 25 percent. The next item on the agenda has to do with our cemetery. Getting a lot of internments on the weekends and on holidays, so we're, we're proposing to change the schedule of fees to the weekend the holidays to get it up to $2,000. Um, it's costing us some overtime. We're calling people in, and the union contracts have to be followed. So we had some discussion with Matt Veronese and Keith Budetti, who handle this stuff, and we kind of come up with these numbers would cover our overtime. So um, it, uh, this internment, too, is going to be $800 for a cremation, I think something we hadn't covered before. So th the, the request for the, this schedule fees is just to cover our overtime costs that we have, um, and Town Clerk Kelly Lego was involved in this, so that'll be on the agenda. So that's the 2000 for everything, Sundays, holidays. All right, and that was even for the, um, whether they were remains or, yeah, know, we weren't going to break yeah. down. The, the only, the, 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 this internment for the cremation was $800. I don't think that was ever addressed, so that's going to be addressed. Okay. But that pretty much, I think, basically covers our costs sometimes. And listen, maybe if people could put it off for a day or two, they kind of save themselves some money. We'd all save some money. As I'm sure you remember, you all kind of were involved in we're trying to lower the speed limits on the western end of town. And we were all pretty much in agreement that town has grown so much and that we probably should get these speed limits to the um, to the 30 miles per hour that we have on, on the uh, this side of town. Well, we sent it up to the to the uh, New York State DOT, and they came back, and the only one that they would approve was Morris Hill Road. They would to knock that down from 40 to 30. So I'm just guessing that I think that maybe next year I'm going to put the same request there. I'll bring it back to you guys. You can take a look at it, but I'm going to try again to get the speed limit for the whole town down at 30. We can't go below 30, so I get calls all the time. It should be 15, but... The state DOT controls this, and the only one they went for this time was more so road. Um, there's a couple of projects here. One is the next item is the Lake Road culvert replacement. Anthony, you want to talk to that? So there is two pipes out there now. One is like a 60 inch, and I think the other one's like a 48 inch. But every time we get heavy storms, all that debris from the stream flushes into it and literally blocks the entrance. And then water goes up and over and takes part of the road out and floods the neighbors. So 
If we could just put one big box over there and let us swoop out the Beaver Dam and not have any blockage. Okay. Um, so I have some idea what that'll cost will be, but we'll see. We get it out the bed, see what comes back. But it's substantial. The other one is the number five is down in Butter Hill Creamery Drive. There's a problem with a pipe down there. You want to talk to that? So the pipe is rotten. Uh, we've got some issues up toward the street end of it. It goes quite deep into the ground between the two yards, probably about 15 to 20 feet. So I've been talking to Mike and Norbert. We're going to try to fix the one bad section, it's about 20 feet, yeah. and then sleeve the rest of it. What, the rest of it? Sleeve it. They're Just sleeve it? it? Sleeve it, yep. Sleeve. Oh, sleeve it. I was going to leave it. Sleeve it. Sleeve it. Sleeve it. Sleeve it. Me and Butter help sleeve it. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's a kind of been a problem for a while. That Probably. Yeah. Probably goes back to when we had those big storms down there. Place so wiped out. The next item on the agenda is this junkyard annual fee. Um, it had been ten thousand dollars, and now somehow we've had some inquiries from the one and only we have in town. And Dave, you did some research on this. Yeah, as you indicated, we got uh, a letter from the attorney who represents the owner of the junkyard over on Mertz. Um, First line. <laughs> so, uh, and specifically with regard to this issue, the annual fee that's charged to his client, which is $10,000. That's been in place for many, many years now. Um, but he points out uh, that it's excessive. Uh, and he cites um, case law to that effect, which basically says that you can't impose a, a fee uh, that isn't reasonably tied to the cost of um, the inspections that are required, um, you know, with regard to uh, that issue, the issuance of the permit itself, and the enforcement efforts that are involved. Um, and the case law is good case law. He's right. Um, spoke to the um, building department uh, with regard to the enforcement uh, costs, the issuance costs, things of that nature. You know, they acknowledge that $10,000 is excessive. It doesn't cost them anywhere near that much money to enforce and you know issue and, and do what they need. So he also cites um, a number of jurisdictions that um, charge some are free, up, up to five hundred dollars is what he cited. I did some research myself. Um, so far, the highest fee that I'm able to find in any municipality is seven hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know when that um, fee was imposed first. So, you know, if it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, it's possible that, uh, you know, we can charge more, obviously, you know, over time, the cost of things, everything you know, has risen and should rise. Um, but it certainly, in my opinion, can't be anywhere than $10,000. So, okay. Bring it to your attention to see whether or not you guys want to do anything about it. Are you kind of finished with the research or can we kind of? Yeah. You're done with it. Well, not in. I'm done with the legal research. Yeah. I could still look and see whether or not there are other municipalities out there that might be higher. Um, yeah. We touch base with the association of towns. Yes. To do that. I can check with them. I don't know okay. Know them. They would have to do the same thing as us. You know, go to the municipalities and check and see. All right. So, listen. I just wanted to let everybody know what was going on. So, I think we could kind of keep looking at this a little bit, okay. and uh, we'll get back to it. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the IDA buildings out at um, Stewart Airport. Um, there's two issues here. I mean, do we, the IDA is stepping away. As we all know, the IDA kind of fell apart there for a while. I have a new crew out there, but they kind of seem to be stepping away. I think they're even moving to Goshen, right? They're kind of getting out of there. So the buildings that are there, we, we have one rented out. So, Ray, you know, and he once rented out to the uh, Italian club, and there's a couple of others that are kind of left over from IDA that we've been uh, dealing with. I think we just sent them leases. So I don't want to get into it too much. I think I've spoken to most of you about it. If you want to stop in and see me, but I want to make sure the town's in the best best position we can be in without kind of publicly saying like we could rent them all, or we could look at selling them all. There's a big picture here with Simone out at the airport. And where is he going? We're not sure where he's going. 
So I, I'm trying to, to slow walk this because I don't want to come to you with a recommendation, make a mistake. So we we probably could rent them and then still sell them. But I mean, Dave has kind of done the omens work on this. We've sent them leases, I think, today or yesterday, right? Friday, maybe? Uh, we sent one, two leases on right. Friday, and the other has had the lease, the proposed lease. Okay. So probably about a week and a half, two weeks. Now. So I think that they are also positioning themselves to, they being this two companies, Mello and Seiko out there, as to kind of what, what is best for them. So I just want to let you know that that's kind of been percolating for a while, and it took us a while to get our arms around that whole IDA thing. Everybody here knew a little bit about it, but when we all got together, it was very clear that the IDA kind of was doing what they wanted to do, and obviously there was some trouble out there with the IDA. So we now have a very good handle on what's going on there. So I, uh, I'm a little anxious to see where Simone is going with what he's doing out there. So that's why I'm saying, once again, we're kind of trying to take our time here. Once these guys, they haven't committed 100% to renting it. So once we get there, we'll see. I mean, Yanoni's on a month to month and the Italian club is on a month to month. And, uh, in, in my mind, they're both very, very uh, low rents. One of the problems we have right now is that Todd Wiley's in a very busy season now with his assessments and people challenging them. So we have a little, um, giving him some time to get himself together and then we'll kind of get some more information from him and we'll move forward. But I just wanted to let you know that that is kicking around. I think I've spoken to a couple of you about it. Next is kind of an agreement that we sign every year, just how much Anthony for the highway is getting. And I think these numbers are, are they, they're not hard. I think they can change a little bit. Right? Yes, they can also. But this is something that we do every year. So this is the aid that we get from uh, the state. Um, the next item is kind of an open item that I put on here, like miscellaneous town projects. And we have a lot of different thoughts here among the board members, but just some of them are, the splash pads, the gym, like what are we going to do with our gym? Or are we going to build a new one? And that those prices, they're all like millions. Then the expansion of town hall, we all know we're running out of room here. We have had some discussion with the uh, building next door, you the old white WCA. I tried to kind of purchase that. He wasn't interested, which would have been ideal for us. And we're talking about maybe building something behind the uh, the ambulance core and, and uh, the senior center. The roofs on town hall, roofs on the ambulance building, long overdue for repairs. So they definitely are on the schedule to get done here pretty quick. You'll, they'll be on the agenda on uh, Wednesday. 244 unions, another roof. That's a bit of a problem that we're going to address. The paving project, five-year paving project, pave every road in town. That's, I think, $4 million. I think we bonded for that. Sloop Hill Road, which has been falling apart for probably 30 years down there. We, we are now tackling that. The two COVID jobs we just talked about, Butterhill, Lake Road. The big project is the sewer treatment plant. The plant is, what, 45 years old, and we kind of I've just ran out of kicking the can down the road. We're going to get that all fixed up. We have the new dog park. We have upgraded all the parks. Little League is making some motion, but maybe they want to get the town involved. I'm not too sure that I want to get involved in that. And the tournaments that go on at Percy Babcock Park, you know, is, is are we breaking even or what are, what are we doing? Hmm. So, we can't do everything, right? Everybody knows that, right? There's a certain point where we, we just can't do it all at one time. But some of these things that we have committed to, we're committed to the sewer treatment plant, right? We're committed to paving. Uh, we're committed to the roofs. I mean, we actually had the ceiling falling in on somebody, I think it was last year. So some of these things, I think Sloop Hill is another one that we really have, have to do. So in my mind, the big ones are expansion of town hall. What are we going to do? The gymnasium. Don't forget, if we do, there's a couple of proposals that are out there that uh, have the engineer looking at. For the gym, I'd do it. We could do something with that. If we keep that, 
there goes the sale of that gym. That was in the half a million dollar area. So that would be gone, besides whatever it would cost us to rehab that. And then the splash pads is an issue with how much we're spending and what, what, what the use of it would be and how do we control it. So these are some things that I think need some discussion at some point, and maybe the board needs time to look into all of these things, but we can't do them all. And like I said, we have committed to sewer treatment plan. We are def definitely gonna do something with the water treatment plan here. I mean, uh, that's an issue that we've been dealing with DEC about. Um, we're not too sure what they're gonna do about the GAC system at Butterhill and the GAC system down the Crow Well. You know, we've talked about maybe bringing that sewer treatment plant, water treatment plant back online. So there's just a lot of balls that are in the air right now. <clears throat> I don't know. I know, Eve, you wanted to talk to the splash pads? Well, I was just wondering what else can we talk about tonight that we don't have to keep tabling if we keep checking things off the list. And I know we have talked about the splash pad in the past. I don't know if we could finish our discussion and put it to a vote for the, you know, at yeah, we can. the next meetings. No, um, no, if we put it to vote now, it, I'm just as an informal, like a- um, I meant like at a, at a future, a struggle. near near future. Okay. So, so I won't have you go first. I'll go first. I'm just a little concerned about the splash pads for the time. Okay, I'm not clear in my mind that we're gonna get, the taxpayers gonna get their money split. So at this point, I would not be in favor of splash pads. As of, I'm talking about right now this minute, I think I need to, I need to kind of look at it. We need to get some control of it so we can't, if it's gonna be a Christie Babcock, we have a lot of people out there who come from all over the place for uh, tournaments. I don't know how we can keep a little five-year-old, a little Stevie, wants to get in and little georgia lives in town and he's there but you can't come in and you're standing your mother's standing there like having a well, why can't he come in so that's one of the issues also that is troubling to me uh, matt is very much in favor of it and i understand that uh, i'm just i think the money was sort of something like that yeah it's two well there's there's two one's 250 and one's 125. okay and so again this money would come from the parklands fund right. not accounts where these other projects are coming from, am I right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's close to 600 in there. Yeah, the last memo we got, million. five or six. So one of the one of the parks is 250, and then there's a smaller one that's uh, 125. So, so it depends on what. Yeah, I think, they, I think we, they were pretty much, when we looked at them, they were, those numbers are doubled for each one, for uh, everything, for between engineering costs. That, that's um, to recycle the water, yes. To everything, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's so it's yeah it's 250 plus anywhere from another 50 to 100 because the the number is to add in the recycling system the filtration system uh this company here says it's um 50 to 75 but it, you know we want to we want to be safe on the high side so it says recirculation will add about 25 to 50k more but we can say, you know, up to 100 just to be safe. So yes, you're either looking at 350 or 325. And now my question is, so me and Matt, we did call a lot of other towns and recreation directors and a lot of people do not recommend recycling the water because it's, you know, a lot of maintenance, a lot of uh, machinery that breaks down, it's a lot of chemicals you have to purchase and you have to get somebody that's uh, operated to know how to do it. So I guess my question is with our expansion of the uh, wastewater system is there any way we could um okay so let me back up so first it, the system as today can it take on extra water today we're at, well we're pretty much maxed out now that's right so so if that's the answer then is there some way we could uh, go forward with this but open it slowly and limit its hours as the uh, wastewater treatment plant gets expanded so we're sort of getting there I'm or or we spend the money and recycle the water. It's you know we have to pick one. Yeah, those are the two issues. Yeah. But the wastewater treatment plant is going to go from five million to eight million. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a five six year process before right. we get to the end of it. I mean we're going to approve some other things for the wastewater. We've done the dechlorination and we're now talking about the outflow pipe. They're coming down to walk around. And DEC mm -hmm. is if it was with DEC we'd move a lot faster. But they right. are they are very careful with what, what they do. <clears throat> so um, I guess what I'm saying, I'm not one for kicking can down around. I'm just saying not now. 
That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. You. Uh, I do like the idea of kids that are in apartments or anything that may be in a situation where they don't have a swimming pool have the opportunity <coughs> to go. But then I also think about the other part of it where like we're still getting these COVID things going on, right? Is this a good mm -hmm. time to open up something with that? So I'm not I'm not opposed to it, but I think again, like you, I think we should wait, just measure it out to fit everybody's um, perspectives. Sylvia. I'm in agreement as well, as much as I want the splash pad and so forth. Um, I don't think it's smart right now. And also we have to understand not just what it's going to cost us to create it. And if we're using the parkland funds, but what it's going to cost us to run it. Uh, you know, what will that additional cost be? Uh, would be my concern at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, I've researched it a lot with Matt and I think that 250 is, uh, you know, the, are you saying 250 is 500? I'm thinking it's 500. And uh, the reason I say is because we, I mean, you're not talking, you're talking engineer cost fencing. Uh, and that's not including running it and everything, kind of pads. Um, I know John and Gino and Matt went to a facility in Middletown. If you look at all these places, most places that have Mercedes. So there are people that have apartments that don't have pools, they don't have backyards. Um, and, and, you know, they disinfect them. They, there's a lot of work that involved there. Um, I, you know, I think, you know, I'm not against the idea. I just think right now for this time and, and, you know, I think it definitely should be something we have, we have water issues and sewer issues in town that I think should be here. You know, in my no, opinion, I think it's yours. Yeah. yeah we were and I think that's something that's that why we, we shouldn't vote yet. This is yeah, I think it's, I mean, I, again, I'm not against it and I'll definitely support, you know, down the, down the road of us doing something, but I think it's my opinion. Well, there's, there's a lot of units yeah. being built. I'm not crazy about that, but as they're built, that's thirty five hundred dollars units. So that yeah, increase. I mean, we spent all that money on the parks. I forget what we spent four hundred fifty thousand dollars getting them upgraded here in the last year or two. So there would be money for this project. I mean, the two things is how are we doing it? Are we recycling, not recycling. And I have a big problem. Who's going to be allowed to use it? Especially if it's Chrissy Beck. I think if we were two forty four. Less of an issue. Right? I mean, I, I would say <laughs> residents only because a lot of our neighboring towns already have this, and City of Newburgh is building their own this summer. I believe. Yeah, I was wondering so, if we could see how they make out and how. Yeah, they're. I think they're building it. two. Yeah. Cornwall already has one. Newburgh has their lake. Well, they're both. Um, both of them are, pools are not open. Yeah, no, but they're, built, they're building something. Newburgh's paid that, for it with grants. Yeah. They got theirs paid for. Yeah. Um, and you know, I know we said we had six six and change in the apartments mm -hmm. funds, and you know. I think you're probably looking at a couple million dollars if, if we want to go to a gym that you can use 24 hours a day and seven days all year long, which would probably be more of a bang for a buck right now. And then maybe somehow incorporate that splash pad in that same property yeah. down the road. Yeah, that could be. So well, I just, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to close with my final thoughts. <laughs> now I appreciate everybody's comments. But yeah, well, maybe I can, maybe me and Matt can brainstorm something, another alternative. But um, I mean, I just, I, even though it's seasonal, and, you know, it's not a whole year round thing. I think the families here look forward to the summer because we have a long winter and it gets really hot at our parks and there's not a lot of shade and, you know, a lot of apartment buildings and people don't have pools. So I do think even though it's seasonal, it would be a great amenity for this town to have since our neighboring towns do have one and we can't use theirs. But, um, and I would definitely be in favor of residents only and, you know, either checking, getting a permit or checking your licenses or some sort of a, a checks and balances are the word. It's not getting overcrowded. The so. camps use blue tarps and sprinklers. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, we can look into that. <laughs> Eve, thank you and Matt for working on yes. it. I want you to know that. I know that mm -hmm. takes time out of your guys' schedules to do that. So, and if you guys are in it, that makes me lean towards it more, you know. We'll, we'll look at some alternatives. All right. So, the next one is the gyms. And I, I don't think I'm looking for a store, Paul, but those are the options that we're going to either go out and build one. And the numbers are one was three million, the other was 10 million. Or we're going to try and rehab our gym over here, which I'm waiting to get the course back. I mean, I got something from Keith and Matt on what they recommended we do. I sent it over to uh, Mike. Mike's having people look at it. And it, the expansion is that there's no doubt that if we're not out of room now, we're going to be out of room tomorrow. Uh, so we really need to look at where we go. This, if we could have got our hands on this building next door, would have been answered a lot of our questions with the pool. But uh, he has a pretty good business over there. He didn't want to kind of give it up. So I think I just wanted to put that on the table so you guys know some of the things that we look at over here on a daily basis. That some of these things have to get done, and some of them are nice to do. So I, th these are just the bigger projects, and you know, 
the, the, Stephen said it, and the sewer and the water are big, big issues, and, and they have to be addressed, and they are being addressed. All right. The next item on the agenda is this uh, CIT business, and what this has to do is with uh, uh, all our police calls for um, uh, people with some mental issues that we respond to. And we are just inundated with it. When I read the police blotter every day, there's, there's always something going on, and we have some people that we deal with all the time, the same people over and over again. And we've had some some really what I consider to be serious issues. We've had one guy who showed up at Stewart Airport at the um, the school out there, the special needs school that's renting out there, and he was laying in the snow naked. And I found out before that, at some months or so prior to that, he was at the Marine Barracks naked. So we finally got him shipped out got some help, and then when they released him, he was released to the airport, and the troopers were chasing him around the terminal. So it's like this, and we have uh, one in town who wears a shirt that says, the Windsor police suck, and we're there all the time. So I asked the chief to come by tonight and, and kind of give you a little over, overview of what they're up against back there. And when I say up against, I mean up again. Police are trained to a certain level dealing with this type of complaint. And beyond that, they're not trained. But at two o'clock in the morning, the only one dealing with this would be a police officer. And I definitely foresee something bad happening if someone is gonna get killed. Somebody's gonna overreact. You can watch the news or read the newspapers and you'll see mm -hmm. mothers, and I don't care if they're white, they're black, they're Hispanic, they're poor, they're rich, they're always saying the same thing. I've been trying to get help from my son for so many years and no one helped him. And now officer so-and-so shot him. So with so many calls that were going on, I just see this as a definite possibility in our future. So Chief, you want to talk a little bit about your numbers? Yeah, sure. So um, I share the same concerns as a supervisor, obviously. Um, it's really one of the Probably the main hot topic right now with the police department as far as what we're dealing with. You know, everybody knows domestics are dangerous and in certain situations we get called to are very dangerous, but these are certainly at the top of the list for us. So if anybody's been keeping up with the community advisory panel, uh, supervisor runs, um, it's been talked about for many meetings now. And if the public need, wanted to review those, they could certainly watch those videos and learn more about it, or they could also call me at any point and be glad to talk about it. But I just recently learned that um, the town of New Windsor and the city of Newburgh uh, police departments, they go back and forth as far as who is number one for any given month in responding to these mental health crisis calls. So perhaps it's us one month, perhaps it's the city of Newburgh. We're the highest in the entire county, if you could believe that right here in New Windsor. Right? So um, that's certainly startling to kind of hear. Um, just to briefly talk about numbers, last year alone, we went to 298 crisis intervention calls, just us. Um, already this year, um, ironically, we've done 128 calls at the end, so far, so far at the end of April. Uh, we thought March was our highest year ever, which it was up to that point with 35 calls just in one month. Um, but then April happened and we had 46 just in one month. So we continue to break records on how many calls we're going to every single month. And again, 46, it definitely sounds like a lot to me, but don't assume that they're spaced out evenly over the course of 30 days or 31 days. We've had situations where there's three calls just like that going on at the same time. And you can imagine the, the resource pull that that is for us. So I'm um, on a sidebar as well. Um, I'm also the Orange County Police Chief's representative representative for the mental health committee for them. So not only am I deeply involved in it with our town, but I'm also representing the municipalities from all over on behalf of the police chiefs when we talk with the mental health people, um, and whether it be through the county or whoever. Um, I could assure everybody we're doing our part. Every single member of our department's trained in CIT, including myself. It's the highest level of training that police officers have. We all have it. Um, all the police officers do an excellent job. 
Every time they go on a mental health call that meets a certain criteria, they do a form. That form goes to various, several different municipal agencies that follow up with the mental health end of it. So nobody falls through the cracks. Um, but as the supervisor mentioned, we're going to back to some of these upwards of 10 times to the same people um, in the same year, um, sometimes several times in the same month. So we're doing our part, trying to, not to have anybody fall through the cracks, but we need some help from some of the other people. So, uh, so as the supervisor explained, we have uh, serious officer safety concerns, and those have been brought up to the county officials when we had some of the meetings. We also have cost concerns. Again, we're dealing with these. Um, a lot of these calls get over shifts, so the officers then have to remain on the shift. We're paying them overtime. Um, we're talking about transports out to the hospital. Transports require two officers. Um, they're transporting them out to Middletown. They're transporting them out to Fort Jervis. Um, it's costing the town a lot of money, a lot of man hours um, as far as police officers. And then remember, too, the officer safety aspect as far as, okay, two police officers are now bringing someone out to Middletown to receive health services for their mental health. Now there's two less police officers in town to protect the town. Sometimes we're doing two of those transports at the same time. That's four officers at a time. So there's complications there. So we're working hard to find some solutions. We're getting uh, the appropriate mental health people involved. We've been talking with them. And at the end of the day, we just simply can't sustain what we're seeing right now. This cannot continue. And we're looking for solutions moving forward with, with anything that we could do to to not only get the help to these individuals in the town, because that's our priority, but again, we're not mental health professionals. We're police officers. So we're the ones that get called to go deal with it, but it doesn't end there. They need to receive treatment. And we're, our concern is either they're not receiving the treatment, they're refusing the treatment, they can't find the individuals. We're doing everything we can and, and we're exploring our options here and we need help. Well, one of the things that we uh, have done I I called the county executive and he was away, but I talked to Harry Port, he's his assistant. And I said that since we are number one or number two, and the city of Newburgh is number one or number two, that I am willing to come to you with a proposal that we pay one third of the cost to have a mental health clinician here. And the city of Newburgh pay a third and the county pay a third. So I think that once you get all the information that I have, you would probably think that's a pretty good idea. So we ran that by Harry. I got a call back from the commissioner, I think, of mental health. And they always want to tell you about a lot of statistics, okay? And I get glassy eyed. So I know what we're dealing with here. I know what the city of Newburgh is doing. The chief has had a conversation with uh, the chief in the city of Newburgh. He thought this third and a third is, is a great idea. I mean, he doesn't write the checks, I guess to go to this council and whatever. But I'm going to kind of put that in writing to them. And and I'm going to say what I've said before. Someone is going to get killed. And the person that they will want to string up will be this poor police officers out there by him or herself and having a struggle with somebody who is mentally ill. So they keep, we I think they are a little nervous about how high it is over here. And they keep talking about a peer person to come here. I don't want a peer person. Peer person is somebody who's had a couple of weeks training and then they would kind of deal with this person. We had very much success with having someone from Fearless here, which was the domestic violence. We had that, she's still here? Yeah, they're switching personnel, but yeah. Okay, so they are actually in our building. So we have these domestic complaints that Chief and I met with, with their executive director and, and here, back in 2020 and convince them that, yeah, this would be a good, have someone here. And they have been a great resource for the police. Police are trained in a myriad of things, and but they're trained to hear. Some of these mental health need to be here. So I'm gonna put it all in writing soon, but if anybody has an objection to what I'm talking about, let me know. You know, don't let me know now, but give me a call because probably next week I'm gonna write that letter and I'll write it to, Newhouse, I'd like to speak to him first, but if he's not in town, I can't talk to him. But I did speak to Harry, who I, I think is a great guy, does a great job, but he just referred me to the mental health and they gave me a whole bunch of statistics. 
I, I just think, well, I'm, and I'm sure you're working on it, but one of the biggest things, and I see it because I work there, is that far too often we, we're dropping these people off at a hospital, whether it could be Garnett or whatever, and before the officer gets back here, yeah, back. those people are walking out the door. Right? So I think a doctor here or a nurse really? whatever is great, really? but at the end of the day, when we they say, yeah, they have to go out there, unless they're committing them, which I don't, we're not seeing, we're That's dealing what we're with doing. these people over and over and over. It's just... I don't know what the county's doing on a level with, uh, well, the, with doctors. When I talk to her, she's, an, and I, I, I have thought this of myself, once they did away with committing people and they went into this, you know, social work kind of thing, a lot of these people do not belong out here, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we don't have the issues that they have in New York, but they're having people pushed in front of trains. And some people do not belong in society. Some of them are in prison. Maybe some of them should be in a mental institute. Well, maybe they get some help. These people are not getting help. It's just evolving drug, and you're right, and that's why we're upset about it because it is a revolving drug. Same person, same same issue over and over again, you know. And you can talk to them. It's one wanders around night, talk for five minutes, and you're like, oh my god, this poor guy, he should not be out here, but he's out here. So I just wanted to let you know that if you kind of have any um, issues with that, let me know, and probably next week I will send that letter. Okay, uh, the last item on, on the public agenda is this Blooming Hill Farms. Now, I have spoken to uh, Stephen about it, and I think, Eve, did we talk about it? No. Was it no, you no. and I, Sylvia? No. Right. Okay. So, listen, the fact that they're not going to build this um, housing development out there with this sewer treatment plant and the traffic and all this other stuff, now they are kind of moving into this uh, project. Um, when I asked Stephen to speak to somebody because he was actually out there, but the issue with this is even though there's no houses, these people talk about two or three hundred people coming on weekends to come to the restaurant and whatever else they do there. It's a farm. So is that great? And it's not permitted use. So there would have to be some action by the board to even let this happen. So it's, listen, a lot of these people think they was the forest out by the house. They didn't realize someone owns it and they're gonna do something. And that's when this project came out. I think it was 400 homes going out to Apple Ridge. We're talking about that. And now they're off that and they wanna go into this. So why don't you kind of give a little overview of what you do? Yeah, so I saw it was on the agenda, so I decided to go out and pay a visit out there. Um, I spoke to uh, one of the owners, actually the owner's son, Austin Jones, and Mr. Jones, he introduced me to his father as well. Um, they, it's a, you basically what you said, it's a, a more, more of a farm to table type stand. They have a, um, you know, they started out with a little building where they would sell, you know, uh, farm stuff, uh, fruits, vegetables, and so on. Then they, the kids went to college, they came back and they opened up this, uh, farm to table type, uh, eatery, which they do, which they were busy when I was out there. I got there 10 30 in the morning and the place was mobbed. They have, they take reservations. Um, they do, um, do have like a, you know, they serve alcohol, they serve breakfast, lunch. Um, it's only open five days a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday. They're open five days? Five right? days. Um, they, uh, they're they actually right now building a pretty large um, deck, if you will, to put a tent over it to have you know, like more of an indoor wedding. They, had, they, were happy, they have them out there booked from, I think it's, they do it from May to, or April to October is when they operate. Um, and it was getting muddy, so they put something out there. They only consume, they're actually on a 50 acre parcel there. They only consume like maybe two acres out there, if that. Um, they have a 50 acre parcel out in Chester where they grow a lot of their vegetables and stuff. Um, it's just got to a point, I checked with the police department to see what kind of complaints they've had of noise or anything. The only issue they had was they're very, very limited on parking out there. Um, and they were parking on the road, but they rectified that pretty quick. So they were they were very attentive to you know the neighbors' needs there and everything. Um, they they're kind of outgrowing the area, so they know Mr. Menard that farms because the farmers know each other. Um, told them that they were interested in his plot, which is like 186 acres. Um, the kids, along with the father, live on that property, so they were looking to go to this place, build a couple houses for themselves to stay perhaps in the back situate a little more parking and do the same type thing. Um, they understand that they, and in their letter to you, they're looking to have us change because the permitted use doesn't allow, right. you know, I think it's periodic alcohol where they always serve out. They actually have a liquor license. They're actually considered as a uh, restaurant in their town. 
Um, so that has to be changed. Um, you know, I, you know, they were aware that, you know, could go to a public hearing or, or, you know, willing to go put on a spiel with everybody. I, I really, I think for me, it would be a fitting, it'd be a nice little fitting thing for out there. Um, the concern I had and I explained to them was obviously it's in the middle of a neighborhood, if you will, traffic. Um, you know, it was concerned with truck traffic and music and noise like that. And they understood and they said they'd come and listen to anybody's concerns. All right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this guy and have him come in and make a little presentation, right? And I'll let you know, I'll probably try and do it in the afternoon, it's usually easier with some people. And if you want to come in and listen to it, come in. And then once he makes the presentation, then we'll kind of have a, a little chat about it again. And if we are going to consider it, that would be a public hearing. And me, what I've done since I've been back is I send letters to everybody out there, all around. Hey, we're having a public hearing in this state about this. You want to come in? Come on in and listen. Right. So I'd, I'd rather like to hear from him what he's going to say, and then we'll see where we're going. I mean, it's nothing's great for those people because it's nice and quiet, right? It's the woods and everything is nice. Now, all of a sudden, the house is off. This is it. So I think I'm going to get a hold of the guys, tell them to come in maybe another week or so. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I, spent, I went as well. I spent some time out there Did, on okay. both properties, and I talked to people and actually had a long talk with our county legislator, Kathy Stagenga. Yes. She's very familiar with okay. Blooming Hill Farms. They're a Blooming Grove Chamber member, and she works closely with them. And she told me a lot about their reputation, about their clientele. Um, she has nothing but great things to say about it. She would love as well to come to a presentation or a meeting and discuss more about it. Um, from what I learned already, I know there's more to learn here, but um, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of this. I think uh, it's better than a housing development. We uh, don't have anything like that in the town. We don't have any farm stands or anything and it'd be a great restaurant. And um, yeah, I'd like to see where exactly they're putting the building for the wedding venue or the restaurant. Uh, near, you know, how far it's going to be from, I think, Spitzka or Petsma Lane. That's the <clears throat> closest road with about, what, 15, 20 houses. And uh, there's the next closest road is BD, but that's like way. So the property they're at now is very small compared to the property where they want to go to. So that could be not a bad thing for its neighbors. So from what I know now, I, I think it's a really great, unique project to move here. They're leaving regardless, and they got to go somewhere. And right. this minority guy wants to sell. I mean, I think we should definitely consider this as opposed to what it could be in the future, but yeah, I would like to hear more and, and look at the specs. Yeah, like well, our, our thing is to change the use, and then the, a lot of this other stuff becomes plenty more than that, like that, you know, they kind of set the tone for it. But mm -hmm. let me call this guy, I'll, I'll see if I get him in maybe one day about three o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'll send everybody a little note. He's coming, you want to come in, come in. Let's see what he has to say. I'd like to say something if I can. You know, one of the things in New York that has been a complete shame over the last 50 years is all the farms are gone. Mm -hmm. So if you can take a farm, a farm family and take what would have been cows and maybe a bunch of steer and pigs that people complain about that also, because that would be what it was for probably hundreds of years and make it something like this, I think it's great. But because it's a special use permit and we have to vote on that, I think the constituents that we represent need to come in and voice their opinion. If there's not enough of them, I'm agree with you. I think we should have something like that in our town. Yeah, I want to hear from that that road right. and then. Yeah, if we were, I think we were, we were just simply change the bulk table. I think they would they wouldn't even need a special use permit. What did you say? If we change the bulk table to allow that permitted use in that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be. Uh, yeah, the good the good part is that people can speak up. We can listen to them, right? No, that's fine. Yeah. I think it yeah that's very important, and that's why I said send letters to everybody around there, whatever it would cost for sending letters, and hard to say. Yes or no until I hear from them. Exactly. Right? I mean, it's not behind my house. So, I mean, I don't want, you know what I mean? I want to hear from them. And then obviously, the flip side is okay, so do you want 400 houses? You know what I mean? It's right. Like, what, or something what, else it could some, be. Yeah, we don't know what it could be one day. Yeah, eventually, just... something. I think we're the small part. I think the planning board's the hurdle. Yeah, no, you're right. No right. doubt about it. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm not even going to go up the dime until we hear from the guy in Syria. So, so. All right, I, go ahead. Anthony, uh, just a quick question. I'm sorry to circle ahead. back to this, um, the highway thing. On this, I know there's something that we're going to have to probably assign eventually. Um, this agreement, the annual agreement for expenditures, there's, it says a uh, highway paving schedule. I don't believe this is not the paving. Is this the slurry schedule or is this actually the paving schedule? What roads are they? But they're like pine. Um, there's two of them here. I don't know if this is the paving bomb schedule. 
there's a whole there's these two oh, okay. i'm sorry i would just just curious to see because i know some people are asking you know my road's getting paid i'm like i don't know i don't know if that schedule's out yet so i was just looking to see it if that was uh These are all tentatively to be paid this year. Okay, so not the slurries, the actual payment. Okay, thank you. Um, so just that, uh, I know you. I think I drove you crazy too with this digital sign thing. Yeah. This was the new design. No, but so that's the. This is the different than the flower before. bed. Yeah. Um, we and I know the. I know. I think some people brought up some concerns with perhaps some local signage companies. Um, so we we uh, got Patrick got another quote for me from another sign local, guy oh, yeah, from yeah, not yeah. this okay. area. Okay. We did reach out to Leaf, who's in town here a couple of times. Yeah. He responded right away and it has not got back to us with numbers. Right, so so let's I'm trying to use local. Document that we asked them. Yeah, right. Get back to us, get back to I'm trying to use local. Yeah. So I, but uh, if they don't get back to you, I'm not going to want the guy. But yeah. Not interested, not interested. That's, um, I'm sorry. I just had a couple of brainstorming today. Um, just to circle back for a, a couple of things here, if, we, if you don't mind. Um, I just want to, the, uh, the stipend topic. That's not on the agenda. It's not. I don't know if you and I. I, had, I think we all got a phone call from a a, a resident that was looking to bring it up. I didn't. Yeah. No, I did. <laughs> I think some of the other town people, town board people. Who called? That would be me. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you did get a call. I did get a call. You did get a call. I did. Every one of the board members got a call. Yeah. I spoke to you direct. About. Jessica Marina's ten thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's that a, was a you budget. Might, I just, I just want to touch on something yeah, for yeah. a second. So, it was, it was definitely a budget item. So my, just my, my question was that when, when it was brought up last time, I know it was an issue with, um, with, you know, I guess there, and there's fourteen of them, and some of them are getting out of control. I know I had brought up, uh, I had the thing that the, obviously the chief was aware that I am the communications guy, yada yada. yada. Then I got a when I got the call and I looked in the budget and there was Jessica. I'm gonna use Jessica as for example. And I don't Jessica listen. I'm not picking on you, but if she was the latest one, um, she she's she's in there. Um, she's in the budget. However, unlike and I'm just gonna I have to use me as an example because I don't pick anybody else in here. Back in 2002, the police chief for the department head then wrote a letter. It got approved and then he attached duties. Jess is, and, and I'm, for history reasons, I know when it was done, but there's no duties attached to it, nothing. And my my feeling is that 10 years from now, or when um, we're all gone out of here, and somebody looks and says, oh, okay, Jess got one, or whoever, or John McDonald, or Sue Scheibel, they got them, and these are, the, these are their responsibilities, and that's not with this. And I'd like to see something, I don't care if it comes from the department head, or, or you, or whoever gave it to that, we say, this is why we're, this is the, the year we gave it, and this is the reason why. Just for history purposes, when we go back to it, in the event that it happens. The other ones, I didn't see anything on your brother or Jennifer. There is a whole. There was no board action. Nothing. There's a whole bunch of these in here that are just were budgeted. So when they when they get budgeted, and which was like they, I don't read how it happens. No, I don't. I mean, not mine was. No, what was it? So uh, but my, we, my, 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 uh, who Jess? Because she was the last one, and I was just using that because I looked. It was in the budget. My point is, is that there's nothing that's attached to it giving responsibilities and duties. But I don't see anything about those other people either. So I'm I, maybe we can get them for all of them, just yes. so we can have them for the history. You know, we have this sheet, which Doreen gave, which is nice. Gives you the years, does give you some stipend description, but not like comprehensive like mine is. So that's what I was looking to see if we can get something for all of them. So for history purposes, so when we go back, I, I didn't do it, so I don't know. I could write just as that, but I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Way. No, no, that's that's what yeah, that's my point. I mean from so why am I because well, they happen under us and I wanted to see us do it. Yeah, something well, written, that's all. That was all I was just looking to see if we can get something right. This stipends I brought it to your attention hmm. and I have been very clear that we're not taking it away this year. No no so when we get to the budget we need to kind of take a look at this and see what are we going to do? So I had a taxpayer call. I said I would look into it. I asked. I went to the department head and asked him what his okay. responsibilities were. He just said that it was mentioned to him that she was getting it. And I'm just looking for something to say, well, spell out what that was. That's all. Um, but well, no, once again, more. I don't know why your brother got it or Jennifer got it either. And I don't know why they kept getting increased. 
You're going to have to look at the budget for that. I'm, I'm assuming no, that you're the, asking for reasons. I don't know what the, the reasons The were. assumption is that the department heads put in for them, but I don't know. I, I don't do their budget. Well, one is the I know ours. Ours, we did them. Yeah. They're budgeted. I mean, we, you know, we, we, since we've been on, six people have gotten them. So, and they're all, you know, just listing in here, nothing, you know, no paperwork attached. I'm just looking for paperwork attached for us to use down the road. That's all. I'm not looking to pick on Once the again, last. I got to get back to why uh, the other issue. You have to ask them. I have no idea. Who am I asking? I'm ask whoever, what people you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm here talking specifically about, obviously, mine. I'm using me as an example. Mm -hmm. The very last one that was given out. Because I was called about it, like everyone else. I'm just looking for just to get to that answer. That's all. Okay. Um, I just want to say I have a very long list of comments and suggestions and ideas and questions. I just didn't know we were talking about stipends tonight okay. or whatever. About 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 no, no, not tonight. Oh. I just want to say one of the questions is what a taxpayer asked me as well. When we, I just didn't know we were talking about it tonight. But when we talk well, about it, talk I got about whatever you want. To <laughs> no, no, I didn't bring my file. It's very lengthy. <laughs> when we talk about it, I have questions. Yeah, I don't know. I know my point is, is that we could. Uh, I think we can bring talk about a million different things in town. What I know we yeah, don't want to be here forever. We have the department heads. There was never any action on. Who would yeah, know about I, that? You, you, have to, you have to ask. Yeah. I am the part. I am the resident that had the question. Yeah. My question was simple. What is Jessica receiving ten thousand dollars a year for? What are her new duties? Well, uh, one of the four board members now. Okay. Well, I know. You said that because you rely on her and that she takes your agenda. Listen, you want to, I'll give you an answer. The former secretary, who happened to be your sister, was making about $80,000 a year. Doesn't matter. No, no. You she was here many years. Listen, I'm not debating with you. Okay, her. listen, you can't talk at this meeting anyway. Right. Stop, Show, stop up me, Show up at the other meeting. Show up at the other meeting. That was my only reason. That's it. Uh, just one other thing. You seem to be have kept all your records. There are no other records. I have only thing that pertains to me. That's yeah, all right. right. But then I got this this type of sheet from Doreen this year. Yeah. I I didn't bring up this type of thing. I gave it to you. I I know. Well, well, this came from Doreen, but I didn't bring up this type of thing last time. I didn't ask for it to be on the agenda. It wasn't um, on the agenda tonight. No, no, I know. I so I was just going through some paper. You brought it up tonight. I did. Okay. Um, back in February of 22, Doreen, I think you would forward an email to us from Doreen about the capital project fund. And she was looking for a town board. I don't know. I don't know if you remember. She's, she's looking for a town board and I know authorization for a whole bunch of I mean there's cash there that needs to be authorized, bonds that need to be renamed. I was just wondering if we were any of with that. And, and the reason I say is because they're free we have a lot a number of projects going on that, well, you, that frees up a lot of money. You know, yeah. I have been talking to her about that. I think okay. you've been talking to her about it. Right? I have talked to her about it a lot. Okay, so but I didn't know you. I, that we need to bring, we need board action. She wants board, town board authorization. I have it in my file. It's just right. a matter of. I just, was just, that was all. I didn't know if it was. You just heard me with all these projects. Something wasn't done for such a long time. I'm doing a lot of projects. No, 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 no 100%. But there's a lot of money there that I'm saying that can free up, you know, for us to do that. That's why I was just wondering if that we were going to. There's only that. certain things you can do with that money. You know, you have to understand how long has she been in there? No, no, I get it. Give well, her a chance to get her feet up. She, yeah, no, I got it. That's why I asked her. And she yeah. said, I think that's, that's why February she said February 22nd, that's barely two months ago, right? Yeah, no, I think that's why she said it. She just said there was some capital money. And I know we had a lot of projects, like the Culver projects and Creamery Drive. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe we can use some of this money. She was, I think there was one, almost one, one point six million that, cash yeah. that we can use for anything. Once we get the, the bids out and we know what we're doing, then we'll be able to figure out where the money's coming from. And some of the money will come from the... Cares package money or AR and some right, of it right. will come from the money that she's talking about in those uh, in that memo. Yeah, right. So we no. have to get the bids in first. One hundred percent. I just just know that some of that money she was looking for a board action, and I had asked her where we were at with it, and she was, ah, you know, yeah, you guys, that's up to you guys. You well, the me. board action is I don't know what it is yet. How can you allocate money when you don't know? Well, because there's things here that you need. That we gotta rename. There's uh, town board authorization for final source of funding. There's uh, you know a bunch. Let's see what's now required. It's a bunch of things that I think it's just naming stuff, really not necessarily spending the money, but there's we have to allocate uh, some completed projects that were done. Yeah. So yeah. I would just poke and I just had all the stuff from the last meeting. So just, yeah, once we get it straightened out, you'll we'll do some board action. But first I have to know how much we're spending. What else? Uh, I think that was I think that was it. Um yeah, the, oh, the, um, 
We were talking about IT stuff. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll revisit that. We were talking okay. about health benefits. Yeah, I'll I know. We just chosen. I just didn't put on. Listen, I still think that we should help people. It's going to be five to ten thousand dollars to get in. If you don't want to get in, then get out. I agree. Right. So I think yeah, that's not dead. It's just like yeah. Not, I'm just wanting we this give them a heads up soon to say, listen, this is coming down. I think we'd do it now. We'd probably say effective January first Next year. Yeah, just let you know it's coming. So this is only May first. Maybe we give them time to look. Well, I think six seven <laughs> months is enough time to look around. Yeah, I agree. But I mean, let's do another strip poll. You good for five or ten thousand? What are you good for? Yeah, what well, I it doesn't matter. Ten thousand is great. Okay, how about you? <laughs> No, I, I need more time to decide. I didn't know I had to vote tonight. Okay. No, which is just a vote. <laughs> I have, have to get back to you. Uh, I think it's a lot cheaper to spend ten grand, you know, for a town than to have to go hire an IT person and all the equipment. So I think it's a good deal. Sylvia. It all depends on the size of the contract, but right, we talked about this different size municipalities, and I thought we were gonna well, uh, that look at what the contracts is it expire. One size fits all. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, exactly. we're doing them now for not that extra ten thousand, yeah. and they think they can do it maybe with another person. So yeah. if we if we add that ten thousand, it's only money in our pocket, I guess. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'd be inclined for one size fits all. But they might find case law where you can't charge ten thousand. No. No. <laughs> no. Stop. <laughs> what else? No, just something for the executive session. Just something for the executive oh, okay. session. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's it. We're going to go to executive session. Patrick, knock it off. Um, Debbie Green, you could ask that question that the town board made. What's that? No, exactly right in here. Okay.